Okay, let's make a crock and bush. A crock and bush, we're going to use the profiteroles that we made earlier from the shoe episode. And what crock and bush means is crunch in the mouth, and it's a traditional wedding cake, and it's very popular. What we'll need for this is our profiteroles. We need to make a custard, we need to flavour that and fill the profiteroles, and then we'll need to make a sugar. Um, what I'm using is a copper pot, which is, I think is the best for uh, cooking sugar. Gives you even heat, so that the heat distribution from the gas is nice and even. I'm using uh, grated sugar, or just car not caster sugar, but normal white sugar. I've got 500 grams here, and cold water. I've got about 150 mils of cold water and I just move it along and really you just want to make sure that the sugar is wet. This is now going to go on the stove. Once the sugar and the water has come to the boil then I add my glucose. I'm just going to add a tablespoon of glucose and what the glucose does is it stops the sugar or the caramel from melting too fast. It's sort of like a, a bit of an insurance policy. And all, all, all pastry chefs that do a lot of sugar work for crock and bush and for other things use glucose. It's an inverted sugar. So I add that glucose, just a tablespoon's enough. The second thing I do is I wash down the sides with cold water and a clean pastry brush. And what happens is that when I'm cooking the sugar to stop it recrystallizing, you just keep the sides nice and clean. But what sugar will do is, sugar is a crystal, we're melting that crystal and we're going to caramelise it, make it go brown and pick up some flavour, but we don't want it to recrystallise while we're doing this process. So just a bit of water around the sides. And now we just cook it on a fairly high heat. As long as the flames don't come around the outside of the bowl, which is very important, make sure the flame is sits with under the, the pan or the pot and we're just going to cook it until it goes a light golden brown. Okay, now we need to fill these profiteroles. So with the custard, it's cooled down, and I'm going to flavour it. And I'm going to flavour this one with Baileys. I think Baileys and custard is an awesome combination. Could use Grand Marnier, brandy. What I'm going to do is, again, just make this custard nice and smooth. Okay, that's it. Okay, you'll need a piping bag again. And with this soft custard, half fill the bag. Okay. Then your profiteroles. All you need to do is just make a little hole in the bottom of each profiterole. And what we'll do is we'll fill each one of these up with custard. Okay, once that you've got a hole in the center of each one, now we're going to fill them all. Just insert the piping bag, squeeze, and I just squeeze until I can see the custard on the inside. Normally you can feel the weight as well, you'll feel them fill up. Do that to all the profiteroles. Okay, the sugar's ready. And this is where safety is very important. So, always a tea towel on the bench. I'm just going to stop the cooking process. What that does is that once I've got the right colour in the caramel, it will stop that, car uh, that, that caramel colouring. So I don't want it to go too dark. I certainly don't like it too light, but I don't want the caramel to go dark. The other thing for safety is I've got a bowl of iced water. So if I get some caramel on my fingers, I'll be able to cool, cool them down straight away. For this crock and bush, I'm going to freehand build it. So a lot of the people in the, well, a lot of pastry chefs in, in the profession, they would sometimes use a cone that they've constructed. For me, I personally like a, the look of a freestanding crock and bush. And I think it's, it, it makes it a bit more fun. A, there's less rules. So you simply take your custard filled profiteroles and you carefully dip them into the sugar like so, and then I start building this crock and bush. Just one at a time.
always taking care not to burn yourself. Once we've got the first line down, or the first template, I'm going to remove this ring and then I'll finish building this crock and bush freehand. Okay, so the construction's finished, and now I'm just going to finish the decorations. I'm just using strawberries around the base, because that goes great with strawberries, and just a little bit of feathering with the caramel. So for the feathering, just use two forks. Just turn them back to back. Just going to dip it into the sugar. Straight onto baking paper. Because if you get this on the floor or on the table, it's a bit of a mess to clean up. Just back and forwards. And then just placing this sugar just around the base. Just do one more. And it's best when this uh, is done when the sugar is cooler. Okay, so it gets very, gets very easy to handle once it gets cool. Just pick that up. Now, lastly, just this out. Strawberries. Just going to cut them in half. And this should make it look very attractive, you know, look, looking at some colour is all, always great rather than just golden and brown. But the way you would serve this is with strawberries and possibly a coolie. Then just a fine dust of icing sugar. So there you go, crock and bush. Fantastic for birthdays, christenings, uh, weddings and look you could save yourself hundreds of dollars by making it yourself it's not a complicated thing to do and by doing some of these techniques and building a freehand it's very forgiving <laughs>